Let's take a look at working with the selector tool, which is the main editing tool available from within Repitch. So in order to choose the selector tool, we can simply hover our mouse to the toolbar section and we can click on the selector tool. In addition to that, we also have the ability to do this via a key command, which in this case is Q. Now, as you might expect, the selector tool allows us to select an individual pitch block, and then we can do things, of course, like move the pitch up or down. Also worth mentioning that there are two different behaviors depending on what type of workflow that you would like. For example, if I want this to snap to semitones by default, I can click on the settings tab over here and I can adjust drag notes in semitone steps. Now, when I do this, this will automatically drag to semitones. But if I wanted to relieve myself from the grid, I can do so by holding the alter option modifier key and this will allow us to move in between those semitone steps. Now, conversely, the opposite is true if this preference is deselected. Now, in addition to simply click, holding, and dragging our pitch blocks, we can also do some other things with the selector tool. So for example, if we hover our cursor at the very top of any given pitch block, notice how our cursor icon changes. In this case, we have the ability to either increase or decrease the modulation. So this can be useful depending on what you need to do. Now, in addition, by holding down the alter option modifier and hovering our cursor to either side of a pitch block, we now have an anchored point at the adjacent side where we can make fine tuning adjustments. Also at any given point in time, double clicking the pitch block in the center will snap this to the nearest semitone. Also worth mentioning that in addition to being able to do this for individual pitch blocks, we also have the ability to make a selection across multiple pitch blocks, and then we can adjust these together. We also have the ability to adjust the timing with the main selector tool. But this is probably something I would leave for the warp tool, which we're going to look at a little bit later. But if you did want to make adjustments, we can quite simply hover our cursor either at the right or left boundary of the pitch block, and we can simply click, hold, and drag to readjust. So now let's take a look at the main selector tool in action. Let's have a quick listen. Just because I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean I won't find another. All right, so to start off with, let's zoom in here, and I'm gonna be double clicking to snap some of these pitch notes to their nearest center, and we're gonna adjust the tilt on some of these manually as well. You can do some adjustments just by double clicking here. We'll adjust the tilt on this one as well. Double click to snap it. Perfect, let's move on. We'll readjust our position in here. Just gonna flatten the modulation a little bit on this one. Just bring that down a bit, double click here, and we will adjust the tilt on this note. And again, double click to snap it. We'll double click this one and this one. And now let's have a listen to the results. You, babe, it doesn't mean. Let's take a look at working with the center notes tool. So in order to choose the center notes tool, I'm going to hover my cursor to the toolbar section and we're going to choose this icon that looks like a little tuning fork. Also worth noting that we have a key command, which is C. Also, one thing I want to point out really quickly is at any given point of time with any of these key commands, toggling the same key command again will always return us back to our main selector tool. Let's go ahead and choose this option. I'm going to make a highlighted selection across a pitch block and notice that we have this pop-up window. Now within this window, we have two different parameters that we can adjust. This bottom parameter over here, Drift, is brand new to version 1.1 of Repitch. So let's start off with the most obvious and let's choose correction. In this case, we have the ability to dial this between 0 and 100%. And this, of course, based on the recorded performance, is going to aim to move this particular pitch block to the nearest semitone. Now let's take a look at the drift option. So if we adjust the drift parameter, notice that we have the ability to adjust the tilt of this recorded performance over here. So where it started off with might be a little bit downward, but if we wanted to kind of even that out, we could use the drift function first, and then we could use the correction slider to move this up. Now let's highlight this one over here and let's attempt to do the same thing. In this case, the drift doesn't look too bad, but maybe we can straighten that out a little bit and we will use the correction slider again to move this up. 
Now, in addition to being able to use this on individual pitch blocks, we also have the ability to make adjustments across multiple pitch blocks. So in this case, I'm going to select all of these over here. And first of all, let's take a look at the drift. Maybe we'll make an adjustment. We'll do something that kind of works for everything. And then next up, let's adjust our correction slider. This of course can be done in addition to any manual adjustments that you've already made or in combination with them. So a very handy tool that helps automate the process, but you still have the individual manual control that you need. All right, so now let's take a look at the center notes tool in action. Yes, cause I don't want you, babe. Okay, so let's push the C key and I'm gonna dial up the correction amount. Notice everything's snapping. Yes, cause I don't want you, babe. Now let's select some individual notes and let's adjust the drift. This one, this one over here requires a different amount. And let's choose this one. We'll dial this up a little bit. This one, maybe a little bit. And let's have a listen. Yes, cause I don't want you, babe. Let's take a look at working with the draw tool. In order to choose a draw tool, I'm going to hover my cursor to the top toolbar section, or we can choose to use the D key as a key command. So let's go ahead and choose the draw tool. And now I'm going to zoom in on this particular section right over here. In this case, notice that we have this yellow line indicating a transition between these two pitch blocks. Now, anytime that you either visually see something that might look a little bit jagged, or if you're listening back to something and it doesn't quite sound right, we actually have the ability to redraw the actual pitch trace in between the transitions or on the actual white pitch traces themselves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just redraw something which looks a little bit smoother. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit here. Maybe I could do the same thing for this section over here. And we can pretty much just go through this entire performance, redrawing anything that seems like it might be a little bit out of whack or anything that upon playback gives us a little bit of a jagged edge. So maybe this one over here would be a good opportunity to redraw this as well. It's incredibly easy to use and I think you'll find the results are really transparent. Okay, so now let's take a look at the draw tool in action. Yes, cause I don't want you. All right, so I'm gonna go with an aggressive approach for some of these here, just so we can hear it. Let's straighten these out completely. This one over here, I'm actually going to draw right through to the transition. And let's try to smooth out this little dip here. We can move this up. Now the next one over here, notice this little dip. Let's smooth that out as well. And let's just re redraw here. Now for this one, even though I could use the amplitude tool, let's draw this manually so we can kind of redraw this pitch trace. Let's have a listen. Yes, cause I don't want you, babe. Let's take a look at working with the split tool. And let's navigate over here to this little icon that looks like a blade and let's choose the split tool. We can also do this by choosing the S key as a key command. And also keep in mind that anytime we're working with key commands, choosing the S key moves to the split tool, but toggling the S key again would move us back to our main selector tool. When repitch interprets a performance, you may find yourself in a situation where you're visually seeing something which looks like it should have been represented as a single note. Now there's a lot of different reasons why this may happen, but in this video, I just wanna talk about how we can use the split tool to correct this issue. So in this case, it's very easy. Anytime you see something that you feel should have been interpreted as a separate note that we can visually see from the pitch trace over here, all I have to do is hover my cursor and split. Now this has been interpreted as a completely separate note. So let's undo that for a moment, and I wanna take a look at what would happen if we just double click to snap these to the nearest pitch. Okay, so notice that doesn't sound right. Let's reset these. And now I just wanna to listen back to how it sounded originally. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna split this first, and now that this is split, I can double click these to snap each individual pitch block, and it sounds much better. Toggling back to the S key gives me my main selector tool, in which case I could double click to reposition this and then make any further adjustments that I've needed. So in order to choose the warp point tool, I'm going to hover my cursor to the toolbar section. You can see some basic instructions here. In addition to the key command, which is W, we have shift click to create and delete warp points. All right, so let's choose the warp point tool and let's adjust the timing of the performance here. It doesn't mean Let's say that I wanted to adjust the timing of these three notes. So in this case, I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to click in front of each one of these notes right at the very beginning over here. And let's also do one upstream and we'll do one downstream to lock this down. 
Now, if I wanted to make any adjustments to the timing of this section, notice now as we hover our cursor over here, we have the option to drag either to the bottom or to the top. And in addition, we can also drag either left or right. So let's have a listen to the before and after of this result. Just cause I don't want you, birds, it doesn't mean... Okay, let's make a small change. I don't want you, birds, it doesn't mean... We can also hold down the Alter Option modifier to actually change the positioning of the warp point. Let's hear how this sounds. I don't want you, birds, it doesn't mean... Let's take a moment to talk about the Pan and Zoom Display tool. So as you can see, we have a key command of X here or we can choose this by clicking within the toolbar. Now, one important thing I wanna point out is that regardless of which tool we're using, the pan and zoom tool is actually always available via a set of modifier keys. So on a Mac, using the option command, we will have access to the dynamic zoom tool, which is both horizontal and vertical, and shift command, we will have access to the click, hold, and drag to reposition. And as I mentioned, this is regardless of which tool we're using, they're always available. So for this reason, I find myself really never using the X shortcut or toggling to this particular tool because regardless of which tool I'm using, it is always available to use. That being said, if you'd prefer to switch to this tool, that's something that we can do as well. And in this case, the default behavior of the pan and zoom tool is click, hold, and drag to reposition. And the alter option modifier will give us our vertical and horizontal dynamic zooming as needed.